Rich people around the world are throwing money around like it's 1999. And we are wondering how and if this looming global recession isn't affecting them. The world's one percenters are not slowing down in their luxury shopping phase. A phase some of us were forced out of, so we are curious about a lot. Starting with how exactly are luxury consumers still buying? And how is the luxury market still standing strong? The wealthy seem unfazed by the rising cost of living, as evidenced by continued demand for high-end goods such as $1,200 sneakers and 300,000 sports automobiles. Listen to this. Ferrari, as well as the parent company of Dior, Louis Vuitton and Versace, are among the enterprises catering to the ultra-rich that have reported high sales or increased their profit expectations. However, retailers like Walmart, Best Buy, Gap and others have recently lowered their financial projections due to weaker than expected sales from lower income consumers who are feeling the pinch of inflation. These are hard times, right? Now, in previous economic slowdowns, the wealthy were the last to experience the impacts of the recession. Therefore, the continued success of the luxury sector is consistent with this theory. The sustained spending by the jet set is indicative of the status symbol status that expensive products typically have within this group. What do we mean? Status symbols have always been important. People want to own things to tell you how wealthy they are, even in subtle ways. So the ultra-rich still place a high value on status symbols. For instance, a pair of Louis Vuitton sneakers will set you back $1,230, while a handbag from the same brand would set you back $2,370. But the rich aren't thinking about the price tags when they see these products, despite crazy price hikes going on. LVMH, the parent company of the high fashion label, along with Christian Dior, Fendi and Givenchy, announced an organic revenue increase of 21% to 36.7 billion euros, and which equals 37.8 billion in the first half of 2022 compared to the same period in 2021. And mind you, some people are just coming out of the lockdowns. Crazy, right? With the impact of currency fluctuations removed, quarterly revenue at Versace, where a pair of shoes or a collared shirt can easily reach $1,000, increased nearly 30% to $275 million from a year ago. For the quarter, overall sales increased by 15% to $1.36 billion, according to parent firm Capri Holdings, which also owns Michael Kors and Jimmy Choo. Capri CEO John Idle has stated that the company is confident in its long-term ambitions despite the general economic uncertainty because of the proven resilience of the luxury industry. Capri also stated in August on an earnings call, None of us know what's going to happen in the back half of the year with the consumer, but it appears that the luxury industry is quite robust and quite healthy. After posting record quarterly revenue of 1.2 billion euros, Italian supercar manufacturer Ferrari also increased its outlook for the year earlier this month. Car and driver report that the base price of the 2022 Ferrari 812 GTS is roughly $600,000 while the base price of the plug-in hybrid 2022 Ferrari 296 GTB is $322,000. What's even still um, amazing is that a second-hand Ferrari can still cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Interestingly, some businesses, not just in the luxury sector, are seeing increased demand for costly products and services. For instance, Delta Airlines has reported higher revenue recovery from its business class and premium economy fares compared to its standard economy Fair. According to Amrita Banta, Managing Director of Agility Research and Strategy, which focuses on affluent consumers, the luxury market has always had a degree of resilience. But the growing wealth imbalance caused by the pandemic is contributing to the sector's current strength. Because of the decline in vacation spending, most affluent and high net worth customers now have more discretionary cash. But why? Let's take a microscopic view, shall we? There has been a cultural shift since the Great Recession of 2008. Now, affluent buyers feel entitled to spend their income despite the economic climate. We believe this is due in part to the rising standard of living in developing nations. According to Bedraza of the Luxury Institute, 80% of luxury enterprises' clients are almost affluent and this demographic may be experiencing a spending slowdown. However, he estimated that 30% of sales came from their demographic. Instead, he added 80% of a luxury brand's revenue comes from just 20% of its customers, the ultra and very wealthy. 
The luxury industry is the last to feel the effects of a recession since its clientele is more immune to price increases and economic downturns, as he put it. He opinioned that truly luxury companies are so resilient because of the high spending clientele they attract. Alas, folks, we can conclude that the luxury market is not immune, but they are incredibly resilient. But more has been happening across the globe. So in October, something happened, something that proves we were right about the luxury market. While the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, warned of worse economic skies ahead on October 11, the greatest luxury corporation in the world announced surprisingly robust sales, suggesting wealthy customers' demand for high-end items was far from sated. Four out of LVMH, Mott Hennessy Louis Vuitton's five primary divisions outperformed Wall Street forecasts. The most successful and well-known brands drove the expansion once again. This category includes names like Christian Dior, where the price of a single outfit may reach sky-high levels. Analysts on a conference call with CFO Jean-Jacques Gounet pressed him on the discrepancy between the luxury sector's durability and the broader economy's weak spots, such as dramatically rising interest rates, widespread inflation and an impending recession. Luxury is not a proxy for the general economy, Guioni remarked. We end up selling to affluent people and they have a behaviour on their own, which is not necessarily totally aligned with economics. Did you hear that? Not necessarily aligned with economics. As a result of inflation, consumers become more price conscious at grocery stores, yet at Louis Vuitton, price increases do not immediately reduce demand. More confirmation of the pattern came as Hermes International reported a 24% increase in business this year, ignoring the effects of currency fluctuations. This is after the corporation has already raised prices by an average of 4%, giving it the confidence to propose increases of up to 10% for the coming year. Folks, the skyrocketing growth of global prosperity helps to account for the surging interest in high-priced items. According to a report published in June by Boston Consulting Group, global financial wealth increased by 10.6% in 2018, the highest rate in more than a decade. This equates to an additional $26 trillion in wealth. COVID-related limitations have been lifted in most areas after more than two years of closures, virus tests and vaccine checks, among other reasons. More so, according to Associate Marketing Professor at HEC Paris, Gachal Chakretz, post-COVID there has been a lot of revenge purchasing as consumers tell themselves, I'm mortal and life is short. Thus our first statement, throwing money around like it's 1999. The idea came from Prince's Party Like It's 1999 song, which is intended as a joyous celebration of life. Anyway, the wealthy Americans who have been touring Europe this year may attest to that. They have been willing to wait in line on Rue Cambon in Paris to purchase $8,850 Chanel flat bags, because the dollar is currently trading for more than the euro for the first time in two decades. Pretty wild, huh? Even more affluent travellers are staying at LVMH's Cheval Blanc Paris Hotel, which can charge 55,000 euros a night for the so-called apartment. A mix of the top two suites and featuring a private elevator and pool. According to Lucille Andrené, Christie's head of handbags in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, the splurge has spread to the secondary market for luxury handbags because these items are now considered long-term investments and are therefore attracting new purchases. About two-thirds of auction handbag buyers are now female and the average age is 43 compared to 54 in the rest of Christie's divisions, according to her estimations. Unlike in the past, Sims now expect to be compensated for high-end purchases. A Hermes Cali bag, for instance, set a new record last month at Sotheby's auction in Paris, selling for €352,800, and that's about $450,000. 2009 and 2020 brought the biggest financial crisis we have seen, but we still haven't seen a decline in LVMH's organic revenue. Instead, sales have been increasing. Frederica Lovato, a partner at Bain, predicts that 2022 will be another record year for the luxury industry despite the ongoing global crisis. She explains that the luxury market is unaffected because it's affecting more of the base of the pyramid of consumers, the poor and the middle class. 
There will be no significant uptick in the immediate months and future, although growth for luxury companies will slow. Luxury homes, according to Kretz of HAC, may be more resilient than they were during the global financial crisis, since growth in some regions may help to offset declines in others. And the firm's efforts to maintain the appeal of their most sought-after products are paying off, she says. Are luxury consumers still buying despite price hikes and looming recession? You bet they are.